You see the title. Gigguk's thoughts on ReZero Season 3 so far. The only man's opinion that matters in the anime reaction... Sorry, anime space. Let's see what Gigguk thinks. Um, fucking caught up to ReZero. Holy fucking shit. Yeah. Oh my god. How is it? What a, what a banger, what a banger way to start the season. Uh, I, I literally watched, uh, the second half of the second season. Just to okay. recap myself on everything that happened. Uh, Bro did his homework. Then I just binged the third season. Uh, I forgot that the first episode was an hour 90. and a half. So it, uh, it took a long time. It took, it took all day to marathon. And uh, it's, it's going crazy. Oh man, it is much more reminiscent to season one of ReZero. Except I would argue that uh, it's even more fucking crazy than some of the stuff that happened in season one since pretty much every does the first bit of season three remind you guys of season one i'm not really seeing the connection so maybe it's because we're getting to you know engage with so many other characters rather than being stuck at the sanctuary all like 25 or whatever episodes but season three and season one what similarities is there? I'm not sure. Maybe some of like the pop off stuff, or, like the subjugation of the white whale, some of the more exciting battle shit, you know, with season three, maybe. Everyone is getting involved. Is there a single character that has been introduced in ReZero that isn't a part of this fucking arc right now? Is there a character that's been introduced that isn't part of this arc right now? Well, <laughs> you could say like Echidna. I, 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 you could say like Ramji. I hope that Ramji's around. There's Ram, you know, Roswell. They're all, you know, just sitting back. Man, Battle Geese. I thought Battle Geese one person was enough, and now there are like five of him. <laughs> now, True. now there are like five of them. All of them are fucking crazy, and all of. I think that like Battle Geese's crazy tendencies is definitely shown in Capella, Sirius, Lai Roy. Potentially the third, you know, Gluttony too. But not Regulus. I think Regulus is not crazy at all. He's crazy in his different way, but in terms of like the theatrics and like the fucking crazy body language and insanity being portrayed, Regulus is quite reasonable relative to everyone else. Of them are fucking deranged. What is going on, bro? Okay, Rem, Rem fans, we let's just you know, let's just. I is. <laughs> you guys can wait until season four, or who knows? Maybe Rem returns and you know, Arc. Uh, what are we on right now? We're on arc five. So maybe arc six is the moment that, you know, Rem comes back if we, you know, <laughs> accomplish something in arc five. But uh, it's either going to be next year or who knows when fucking season four is going to drop. Is there even a Rem fan still around? I think all Rem fans, um, they've kind of just lost hope right now. I have so much respect for Rem fans that after eight years, after... Season 2, Rem didn't even fucking exist pretty much throughout the entire thing other than through random like references and you know like you know, Carmilla and shit. If you are still on like just Rem or Die and you're in season 3 in 2024, that just, tr just shows so much loyalty. Like you chose the girl that pretty much hasn't done anything since like fucking what, 2020? Like, that's crazy. It just truly shows you the impact of season one Rem. You know, that's, that's pretty much it. Uh, I, I'd be surprised if there was still a Rem fan in 2024. Yes, me. Yes. Oh, wow. oh my, my condolences, man. <laughs> my con nah, I, you know what? When Rem does return, and I think she will. I, I find it hard to believe that she's just going to be forgotten for the rest of the story. I feel like the whole point of like, you know, other people's memories and names getting eaten and gluttony being here is the perfect opportunities to settle that score. And if we're able to do it, bro, you know how annoying the REM stands are going to be. And I'm all for it. I hope you make so much fucking noise on Twitter. I hope that you're the, you just make like all the fucking REM glazes just comes out of the woodsheds. Y'all been waiting for like what? Like nearly fucking five years for this shit. Assuming that it happens in season three. If it happens in season four, you even wait even longer. And oh my God, it's just going to be so annoying. It's going to be so amazing. And the worst part is going to be the bandwagoners. Motherfuckers who gave up on Rem a long time ago. They're like jumping. It's like, yeah, Rem is back. Motherfucker, go back to your tweet history. I bet you were shitting on Rem before. <laughs> 
My condolences. Just, just you wait. Just you wait, guys. 2030, REM is going to pop off. I'm telling you, guys. I'm, tell I'm, I'm telling you. 2028, baby. REM 2028. I'm telling you, guys. 2030. ReZero has been great. Um, I don't... It's, it's going to be weird. Uh, Rewatching season two made me appreciate how much I enjoyed season two. And uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to enjoy season three more than season two. That is a crazy thing to say that only the most cultured and enlightened anime enjoyers could say. Because to the average ReZero watcher, I think that season two was too sluggish for them. Even though there was so much juicy story stuff happening, the fact that we were just at the sanctuary, well, not just at the sanctuary, we were at the Banshin and back and forth, right? But pretty much the majority of it was stuck in the sanctuary, just failing over and over again. And it got people very like, felt, felt like suffocation. And the highs are very high at the end of season two, but the first half of season two, the amount of L's that we take, it really does feel suffocating. You compare that to season one, where due to the structure of the season, right? Arc 1, Arc 2, Arc 3, it happens in like three episodes for Arc 1. I forget how many episodes for Arc 2, right? And then it's so much more of Arc 3. There's these, you take the L's, but you get spikes of highs, of like pop-off moments that keeps you, yes, yes, this is good, this is good, right? It keeps you engaged. Some people got filtered out during the beginning of Arc 3, but man, the peak of Whitewell subjugation and Battle Geese is some of the greatest fucking things I've seen in anime. Like Arc 3 is such a, has a, such a special spot in my heart. And you would assume that the average consumer of this can't appreciate the depth of the storytelling in season 2. But um, they, ca they can appreciate like season three more than season two because of more action, more hype. It's more exciting, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm enjoying all of the shit going down in season three right now. Uh, but c coming, right off, coming right off of like what rewatching season two, man. The character development in season two was so fucking good. And yeah. I know people are like, people enjoy, yo, people dying, pe re like super. Exactly. Giguk is a enlightened, cultured consumer, right? He's not the average monkey that only sees fight scenes and says hype, hype, hype. He appreciates the character development. we actually dying. Uh, people, everyone's, everyone's involved. And I'm like, damn, actually, I, I think I underappreciated how much I enjoyed the character writing and, and the character development in season two and just... Seeing Amelia and Betty's, you know, mm. development, uh, seeing Subaru, too. Subaru grow as a protagonist as well. I was, I was like, I was like, oh, okay. I, I, I actually, actually really, really enjoyed season two. I, I, I think I enjoyed it even more on my rewatch than watching it the first time. In season one, you're like, okay, if Subaru dies like two, three more times, uh, I can, I can see a way out for this. Seeing the amount of shit that's going on in season three, I'm like- Yeah, it, right now. Well, the interesting thing is that because of the straight bet, we're not just abusing Return by Death anymore. And like, we haven't, like, yeah, for sure, like episode two, I think, when we were confronting Sirius, like we died like two, three, four times in succession. But it's interesting how recently we're just continuously going and, you know, the ride, the train's not stopping and there's these enemies that refuses to kill us too. Not only is there, like, plot relevance of Subaru won't end himself due to the straight bets that we learned in Season 2, but now we have opponents who just, like, won't even, like, let us die either. Like, yo, I'm gonna have to, you're gonna have to do a fucking Gigak Melania run, man. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna do a 15-hour stream of just watching Subaru die because I have no idea how the fuck he's gonna put out all of these fires, man. <laughs> I don't know either. And like, the speech he made in the most recent episode, and I think episode 6, it was so cool. His declarations to Anastasia and Yulia saying like, nah, this is what a real knight is. I'll save everybody. I'll defeat all four archbishops. And like, I'll pretty much make the pie and eat it too. But there wasn't... <laughs> That's basically just Donald Trump saying, <laughs> I'm gonna fix the inflation. I'm gonna fix the economy. How? <laughs> Just watch. All right, we'll be waiting. <laughs> Episode two already. Fucking speed ran that shit, man. <laughs> the thing I find interesting about season three is just like, you're seeing how, sh how bad shit can get mm. before he like resets. Because like, there's so many, there's so many moments in some of the re 
recent episodes where I'm like, oh, okay, some shit's just gone down. He's going to die and reset. Nope. Okay, shit's getting even worse. He's going to die and reset. Nope. nope. Again, right? I, I think it was actually genius for straight bet to be a mechanic in the show, right? If we didn't have important character development centering around valuing your life and not abusing this return by death, then there's really, like, you can just metagame the entire time. And it, it would get kind of boring. And Tapi has introduced this story point where now he can't do that. He won't do that. And it's fascinating because now we can't abuse the one power that we have to just, like, you know, fucking fix every problem. And the story just keeps going. And it's like, when is the run going to stop? Has a checkpoint been made? Oh, shit, we lost the leg. But okay, we got the dragon curse shit. Is the dragon curse blood just going to be a complete thing forever now for Subaru? I, I don't know. This is crazy. And it just, like, it just keeps going and going. And then you get, like, that anxiety of just, like, huh. Huh, I wonder, I wonder when he's gonna die. I wonder yeah, if he's exactly. gonna die. I wonder if he's actually going to, uh... What if he just... What if he just, like, one passes it again? Like, the white whale subjugation. It still blows my mind that we fucking... Did that boss raid in one run. That is truly just incomprehensible that, like... Like, like one fucking run, we cleared it with minimum casualties. And maybe for, you know... Pristella and take him back to city against the witch's cult. Could he do it in one pass? That'd be fucking crazy. Actually going to commit to this playthrough and just try to uh, solve everything that's going on. Which I know is part of his character development in season two, but it ReZero has more consequences than Overlord. Random fucking comment. <laughs> I thought that Mushoku Tensei would be brought in because, you know, they're always fucking living rent-free in each other's heads. It's definitely, seeing how much, seeing how much has gone down in season three, I, if, if it were me, I would have already reset about a hundred times already. Mm -hmm. But also, some of the stuff that's happening in season three, I'd be like, you know what? <laughs> maybe do I want to do that again? <laughs> guys, maybe this timeline isn't fixable. May maybe this timeline isn't fixable, guys. Maybe we got a Rick and Morty it, and uh, we got we got to find another timeline. It's uh, this 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 is Dunzo, guys. Unsavable. Uh, let's let's run it back. Run it back, guys. Run it back. FF guys, guys. FF fifteen. Please, guys. Please. Why do happen. we think we can win this one? Please, just FF fifteen. Oh my God, Subaru. Come on, man. There are a lot of crazy people in this season. Yeah. Oh. He dropped oh, his no. coffee on his shirt. Right on my right on my white shirt. Come on. Fuck, what a great way to start the stream. Skill oh, issue. <laughs> is that it for the video? Okay, the last bit is just Gook spilling coffee on his shirt. And that's pretty much it. Season one is more reminiscent like season three, I guess, due to the wide roster of characters fighting and doing action shit, I guess, in arc three. So yeah, I think there are similarities there. Season two, I think, is really um underrated in a lot of people's eyes where they only enjoy battle shonen you guys watching this shit because you're such a hardcore isekai and rezero enjoyer of course you're going to be able to you know appreciate season two content but i truly do believe that the average fan watching this shit much would rather have the short incremental burst of lows and highs and have hype shit happening like in season one compared to season two therefore season three is going to be better you know uh respected i guess but it doesn't mean that just because the average person enjoys that more and there's more numbers you know boosting that doesn't mean that season one's better than season two everybody has you know it's all subjective it's like who am i or who are you to judge like what people value in a story so everyone has different biases towards you know character writing character development's more interesting and i'm like no i just want more unga bunga fight right you can enjoy it all in season three i think has been so fucking good the only thing really t sad like, it, it, there, it, there are some pros and cons of this, right? I think overall, the um, story of Season 3 is super hype. Like, we're locked in, four Archbishops show up. Amelia's getting taken away. Subaru can't just reset anymore because straight bet. And it's looking hopeless, but he's still got it together. And not only that, we have very powerful allies in the city, right? We have Anastasia. We have Krush, who... <laughs> It's not looking too good for Cruz. Priscilla's around. Priscilla's popping off with the Yang sword. Amelia's taken, but I think that um she won't be just a damsel in distress and she'll, you know, do her thing. Al being so shady is keeping the mysteries of Rezero going strong. More plot relevance. Mysteries of, like, T-Phone's remains underwater and shit like that. 
Could Pandora be around? I'm not sure. And it, it's, it's really exciting. So many different moving pieces uh, in this great arc. But my one complaint, which actually is not a bad thing. It's actually better for me specifically as like a content creator compared to like a consumer. Is that the way that they're handling the episode releases... As in like, you know, there's like, a, there's like an attack arc. I think this is the attack arc right now. It's the first eight episodes of season three. And then I think there's the thing called the counterattack arc, which is the second half of arc five, which is going to be another eight episodes. So first eight episodes airs from October, and we only have two more weeks of ReZero left. And then we got to wait until February, right? And then February, we'll get another eight episode drip, and that'll conclude, you know, I think this whole siege at Pristilla. And then the rest of the episodes that add up to 38 will cover so, so comprehensively arc 6. And who knows what the schedule for that will be. But it sucks that ReZero for us will be coming to a conclusion in about 2 weeks. And we'll have to wait a couple of months. But then it comes back, banging again for 8 episodes. And then we have so much, you know, arc 6 content to expect throughout all of 2025. So ReZero is honestly just going to be airing throughout, you know, this last quarter of... 2024 then all throughout 2025 and even though it kind of like sucks that we have to wait just a bit it's way better this way to give them enough time for them to actually you know you know put quality into the work rather than us it's just enjoying i don't know a rush product or something like 12 episode season and us just you know waiting until like four years for like another season i think that this is a very great thing since obviously ReZero is going to be, it's, it's a trending topic. And not only that, it's a topic that really aligns with my audience. So all throughout 2025, I'm just going to be fucking killing it. Just farming even more ReZero content. It's just that we got to wait just a little bit, right? Just a little bit. But that's pretty much it. Uh, this is uh, not from obviously Giggle's you know, channel, but this is a fan channel named Galal. Please go give their channel a like on the video. And I will see you guys next time.